probably special because no one can get here. And it's got the most amazing scenery, most amazing beach. For us, it is a lot more than just fishing. There's only one present you can give families, and particularly children and grandchildren, and that's time, your time. Um, my name's Damien, and we're sitting right in the middle of Kangaroo Beach on Kangaroo Island. We've been coming here now for 45 years. So when we started, we didn't have, didn't have a boat and we progressed to a dinghy and oars. We then got a motor. We couldn't afford a trailer in those days. And we've progressively moved up to, to this one, um, which celebrates um, my retirement. My three boys are very keen fishers, so we decided to go, go in shares in the boat, which um, is fantastic. So this has opened up a whole new opportunity for me. I never thought I'd get. I'd made the decision not to continue boating simply because it was going to end in tears because someone was going to get banged up on a retrieval or a launch. No more jumping in near propellers and trying to bash their legs as they climbed over the back. So I'm a very happy man. I think just being able to get onto the boat, pack a small barbecue, an esky, get everyone on board, shoot down to a beach which has never had a vehicle on it before, set up out of the wind, um, is it, just priceless. Been a fantastic uh, two days. We've covered a, a lot of ground, all the way from one of the caves, right through Snug Cove, Kangaroo Beach, and then all the way down to Elephant's Ass and uh, Cape Torrens. Today we had our nephew, Sam, and his four children plus friend. The, today, the fishing worked for us really well. So crow fishing around here is, is usually pretty good. It, it's great watching everyone uh, get involved in pulling up those pots, rebaiting, and of course, we're lucky in the bay, we've got salmon, so we can usually troll for salmon, use them as bait. So it's fresh bait going in every day. It's the old, you know, hunter-gatherer type thing, but also it's so tranquil. You can be out there, something happens every day we're out there. There's some new scene, there's some new bird, there's some new fish popping up around you. I mean, the thing about Stavy X is that, like all Stavy, you can have everyone fishing on one side. You've got a fantastic walk around cockpit, so robust. I know that even in the worst of weather, um, I, I feel so safe. The pontoons um, sold me right in the beginning when I first bought a Stavy craft, and that continues through. It's one of those stable boats with everything on it that you could want. And if it all did decide to turn to shit, um, this is the boat I'd love to be in. You've seen the cliffs which we operate around here. I always feel if something happens, um, the boat's never gonna go down. Uh, it's always, it might get bashed around, but it's always gonna be floating. And when you're um, 40, 50 Ks from anyone else, that's pretty handy. The length of the boat is 24 feet and the beam about 2.55 meters. Plenty of great working area. Basically, it's a standard stabby craft, as everyone would know it, the 2400 Ultra. Excepting this one, Stabby X is made in a separate factory, but incorporating the, the legs. Under here, this all folds down, and in there is a Briggs & Stratton engine, which is driving the hydraulic network for the wheels, the steering, the up and down. And so that's the sort of brains and the intelligence on the boat. Beautiful, air-cooled, runs off the same fuel, runs off um, the same steering system. So the steering wheel does all the steering, uh, whether you're at sea or on land. So now we're just in straight drive mode into the water. 
It'll do up in the land. It'll do up to eight kilometres on land. Right now we've got water under the propellers. Start that. Get out of the wave zone. Um, so automatic up for all three wheels. Um, camera gives us visibility on the front wheel only. Everything's up. Turn off the Briggs and Stratton and we're underway with the Yamaha. The, the amazing thing about the configuration and the design is that the wheels don't exist once they're up and you're at sea. And I thought, well, it's going to be a, 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 an impost at the back having those wheels up in what would be the fishing zone. You learn to get around that. The convenience of the wheels far outweighs uh, the slightest inconvenience of not having that last bit of clearance when you're fishing. We decided to go with the Yamaha 300. We had the choices of the 250 or the 300. Both weigh the same, both. The difference is the power output. It's a V6 4.2 litre electronic steering. Like most of the Yamahas, they are just bulletproof. And this one has proven to be exactly the same. We're finding now that the boat's sort of bedded in, that we're achieving around about just under one litre per kilometre. And um, I can assure you that um, we're not saving on speed. You know, one of the things here is we leave the boat down close to the beach gets up every couple of days for a refuel and a clean. So um, it, it could not be easier uh, because you literally drive in and you sit down by taking up the wheel. So it just puts you straight onto the boat and then it's um, three points to strap it down and away you go. Built in, built in New Zealand by GFAB, specially designed for the Stabby X, this model, beautiful engineering just travels so well behind and the boat seems really well balanced on it, so very happy. So the original family property here uh, went from Snug Cove all the way through to Demol River Mouth. Once you get past the Demol River Mouth, it's National Park almost the whole way through to Cape Border. Now, because we have guests um, who stay in the lodge and, and self-cater, We've had them from all over the world, and so many of them now are coming back for the second and third time. One, because it's unique. You, you just don't get a place like this. In winter, it's like the wild, woolly Irish coast. It's so reminiscent of some of the wild places that you can get in North America or in Europe. Um, and yet, it's right on our doorstep. So South Australia is really spoiled because we do have great wine, we do have great food down here, but we're living remotely, so we've got to rely upon what we catch a lot of the time. But, you know, I've got to say, the last two nights we've had um, deep fried, uh, fresh whiting straight out of the sea. My goddaughter, uh, Olivia, was here. She made uh, ceviche. It's really quite simple, it's, uh, you don't cook anything. It's just some um, uh, red chilli, green chilli, diced up whiting, uh, the fresher the better obviously. And you just tip on some uh, lime juice and just let it basically cook in the lime juice for five or 10 minutes. And then we've added some coriander and avocado and then toss that through and have it with some nice crackers. We're all out on the deck overlooking uh, the bay. And it was one of those nights where the light was just superb. And, and the food was brilliant. It's what family should be about, uh, doing things together. Um, we're lucky, they all love fishing. They don't necessarily love the cleaning up, but they're more adventurous than me now. They're off um, offshore as much as they can, trying to get sort of bigger, more different fish. Whilst I just love getting King George Whiting and making do that way. At the end of the day, just spending time with them is where they learn to do the things that we love and are able to then go on eventually in life and explore the world and hopefully come back here and go fishing. <laughs>